So let's have a look now at how it is done, the UDP message in, in our code. So, so we are not working with the Ethernet interface, we are working with this ESP interface, which is the similar as the Wi-Fi, normal Wi-Fi interface. And there is this header file called the include, this one, but we haven't got any anything like that in our project folder in here. You see, this is our project and there is nothing like the file we are including. And what is this? The explanation is that, that this file is included in the operating system version 6. The same way there is nothing like NTP clients as a separate file in he here, no header file. That's also included in the operating system. And then we define the ESP interface. It's telling it that what is the transmit pin and what is the receive pin. And those we are actually defining here in our embed app JSON. It is replacing this piece of text with the pin number from here, from the embed app JSON. Then there is an, um, a function. So this is the name of the function. And these are the parameters for that one and the type of the function, what it is returning is constant character. So it is checking the network security. Then there is another one. There is a function with this name. It is scan demo. The parameter is the, the name of the parameter is, uh, the type of the parameter is Wi-Fi interface and then it costs the name Wi-Fi. When there is a Wi-Fi interface and the Wi-Fi in here, actually we call that, when we call that in our code, this scan demo. So the, our main code starts from here and we are calling the scan demo and giving it as a parameter that we do the scan demo at the ESP and the ESP we named here in the beginning that we gave our object a name ESP and that object is the like the class ESP8266 interface and this object name we give when we call the scan demo and then that object name goes into the scan demo as an name of the interface and it is the same type as the Wi-Fi interface. But there is some detail, a difference in detail I guess. And then it is scanning the access points. And then there is a definition for the NTP server. So in here. So I'm just defining here the NTP address. I give it the name time, M-I-K-E-S dot F-I. So that's the official time server in Finland or one of those, they have a time, time, time one, time two, time three. So you can scan any of those. Or if you are interested, you can just Google this, this VDD M-I-K-E-S and the NTP server. And then this is in the port number one, two, three. And that's the standard port for every time server. I don't know why they used in the UDP socket example a time server with another port number. 
because this is according to the NDB standard. This is the port number of all the NDB time servers. And then if you try this application in the, our school laboratory, you go into one of the wireless lens, LAN networks in there and try to scan this time server. You won't get the answer because they have I guess they had done it by blocking this port number. The idea is that the, all the computers in our big computer network get exactly the same time from the same time server. And the time server is the time server installed in the network. So there is in, in one of the computers, there is a time server in Hamp network and the, all the computers are getting the time from there. So this won't work in the school network if you try it in there. You need to know what is the IP address or name of the our network time server in the, that network. So anyway, then. So I've named these a little bit different way than in that UDP example. So we define the socket address or, and it's device IP. There is no, no, mm, no, this is written like, like, like you define a normal variable. So this is like the type and this is the name. So your device IP is of the time socket of the type socket address. And then we are connecting. So just printing out that connecting. And if you are not successful, it gives the connection error. Like when I had the wrong SSID and the password, I got the connection error. So the SSID ID and password needs to be defined in here. And then that's the method, the ESP connect. And then you give the SSID and the password and the security. Here you define that it's, it's using this security. And these, these you replace with the names given in this app JSON. So the SSID and password or this text is replaced with text you give for this in there. And then if it is not printing the connection error, it will print out that success. And then ESP get MAC address, ESP get IP address, ESP get netmask, ESP get gateway, ESP get RS. SI. So the RSSI is the signal strength, the gateway is the gateway server, and the net mask is that you are masking the IP address numbers. It's printing the MAC address correctly, but somehow if in here, if I'm not giving the parameter here like this, I got an error in the compiling. I haven't checked why. But here it is not actually printing that out. It is, it is, it is writing that to the device IP. No, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's my IP address, which is the IP address I get from the DHCP server in that wireless LAN network, it is the server is giving me the IP address for my microcontroller port. I'm not typing myself that what is the address. And then I'm giving that address to this variable in here. I tried to print it by leaving this out, but then I get an error. Yeah, okay, then the IP number is now in here. And then. Uh, 
And then in the beginning, we defined that we are taking the heater NTP clients. And then in there, in that heater, there is a definition for this NTP client type. So this is like the type, and then this is the name of our NTP client. And we are using the NTP client at the OVT object ESP, which is the Wi-Fi interface. So we are using NTP client with the Wi-Fi interface. And for this NTP client, we set the server. So NTP address, NTP port, which we defined there earlier. And then we will be reading the time variable. So the variable type is time t. That's uh, one of the variable times types in the our operating system. We give it a name timestamp, and we give it a value NTP get timestamp, and then we get the timestamp from the NTP server. And if there is nothing. We print an error, and then if 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 there is no error, then we print the timestamp. So current time is, and then time is characters, and then we do a method C time on the variable timestamp. That's converting the seconds into years, months, uh, days, hours, seconds. And that, that method is included in the operating system now. So actually earlier I had my own like a program to calculate out of the that seconds since 1970 January 1st that what would be the, the time at the moment hours minutes seconds I used my own function for that but but that was on when we were working with the Arduino processors, they didn't have the function for getting the time. But in this embed OS, in the operating system, there is a function C time. And then it returns the, the year, the month, the day, the hour, the second, and the, the minute, the second, and so on. And then what is this? adding 60 times 60 times 3. So I'm adding here like 60 minutes, each have 60 seconds, and I'm adding like 3, or it is like 3 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds. So I'm adding, of course, the CMT plus 3, which is the summertime in Finland. So this is the green meets meridian time. And then I put into this treat sleep for 10 seconds. I'm waiting for 10 seconds. And then repeating this five times. I don't want to like send more time requests to the center, uh, to the server. Right, that was the code.